So I've got a word about seed and harvest this morning in preparation for tonight and tomorrow morning. So I hope all of you will attend tonight and tomorrow as this is a, a process that we want to take you through. The word God gave in my heart for Heinertsburg is God wants to implant a seed of truth in you for this season that will set you apart from others that will make you feel the legitimate again. I felt in my heart, in my spirit, that there's some of you that don't feel legitimate anymore. That you feel as if you're the, the child that stays out in the field. Do you know that David was most likely illegitimate? And that's why he was the one attending the sheep. And that's why his father didn't recognize him when Samuel came to anoint him. So some of you might feel illegitimate this morning, as if you don't belong anywhere. But God says you, you're legitimate, and you, he prepared you for a new season in him. I pray that he will impregnate you with his incorruptible seed for this season. Jeremiah 2 verse 21 says, Yet I've planted you a noble vine, a seed of highest quality. How then have you turned before me into the degenerate plant of an alien vine? And that's about seed. It's either the seed of high quality, which is Jesus Christ. The, the Strong's Dictionary says that this word means, um, it speaks of a seed of truth, a pure seed, a seed of the highest quality. So there's nothing wrong with a seed. It's whether we allow ourselves to be impregnated with that. And then that degenerate plant speaks of something that's killed slowly. And I know some of you feel as if you've been dying slowly, but surely. As if there was a time in your life where God paid attention to you and what happened to you. But then it just slowly started dying away over a long period of time. So you all know that we consist of body, spirit, and soul. Am I right? If you don't know that, please come see me afterwards. I'll give you the teaching on that. But I want to go a bit deeper this morning. 1 Thessalonians uh, 5 verse 23 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. Some other translation says that this coming of the Lord Jesus doesn't speak of one day when he comes back. It speaks of in the presence of God. So may we be sanctified, body, soul, and spirit in the presence of God as he dwells among us. Paul asked that we would allow the God of peace to sanctify us. Now that word sanctify means to be set apart, to become holy. I'm Afrikaans speaking actually, or most of you are Afrikaans speaking. No. <laughs> half half. So we can speak Fanagalo. But <laughs> being Afrikaans means that some of the English words I've heard for a long time, but then I found I don't really know what they mean, like holy. When you're in school, people say, you're holier than thou. And it, it's, it means something, it's not said in a nice way. So I had to look up the word holy. And it literally means to be set apart, to be taken from one place, and put in another place. Now if this is the place where God is, and I'm here, says I want to separate you from this place, from the mess you're in right now, from the corruptible place, and I want to separate you unto myself. So maybe it was just me that didn't understand the word holy properly. Is there one, of, one or two people that can say, I also didn't get it completely. Oh, I'm the only blonde here, apparently. So that sanctify also means to make legitimate and to set free. 
So God's plan is to set us free and help us move on in this new season. Is there someone this morning that can say, you know, I feel like I've been stuck in a season for a while now? Oh, at least one. I'm preaching to one. The rest of you can sit outside. <laughs> More than one. Okay. Then I'm speaking to the right people. Always when you preach, maybe Pastor Ian have told you that as well, but always when you preach, you're preaching to yourself as well. So don't think I stand here and say these things without any knowledge about what it feels like or anything. So John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth, for sanctify them to live in accordance with the truth. And your word is truth. So in our spirit man, God wants to implant that seed of truth for the new season. But who knows that the enemy also has a plan? Always. The only thing he can implant is a lie. And sometimes it takes years to get to that lie in your spirit. That thing that hinders you from going to the next season. Um, and I found that many times the lie is about the heart of the Father. Because if the enemy can keep us from the Father... He keeps us outside of the blessing of many things. Um, I might as well tell you, but I'm the eldest daughter, two children. My brother's a year younger than me. And um, I was my father's favorite. Because of his background, he came from a very abusive household. He battled to connect with his son. So I was the favorite because it was easier. And it might be for some of you as well. It's easier to love a girl than a boy. You can dress her up nicely. You can buy her stuff because women love stuff. And um, I grew up under the burden of that being the favorite, having to be perfect but also seeing what he did to my brother. So from a young age, I had this responsible feeling, this responsibility to take care of him. And only later years, I want to say less than five years ago, the Lord revealed that lie to me, that I'm not responsible for everything in life. I don't have to keep everybody happy. It's not my job. It's the father's job. So he will speak to my brother, and he will set things straight. It's not my responsibility. And I can not tell you the, the lightness I felt when that burden lift, lifted. So some of you might be stuck with a, with a lie that's been so implanted in your spirit that you don't even recognize it there but for the grace of God. I'm so grateful the Lord is always there to prepare us for the new season and take us into the new season. Luke 8 verse 15 says, The seed that fell into good fertile soil represents those lovers of truth who hear deep within their hearts. So there's the truth again. God wants to impregnate us with his truth so that the lie can be removed, so that we can grow into the new season because of the incorruptible seed of truth. Your spirit is the place of reception. That's where God's spirit speaks. Because God is spirit and he can only connect with our spirits. So the more we tap into that spiritual realm, the more clearer we will hear. And that's where the incorruptible seed of God is planted. But now the problem is not in the spirit many times. Because there's the seed of truth. It's been implanted. But now it needs to be interpreted through the soul area. The will, thoughts, emotions. And that's where the trouble starts with many of us. Agreement? Yes. 
Because the soul is the place where unforgiveness grows. The soul is the place where offense grows. The soul is the place where rejection grows. And I don't think there's one person on this planet that can say, I've never experienced rejection in my life before. I've never felt offended in my whole life. If you're here, please come lay your hands on me. I would like that. But that's the place where we start interpreting that word that we received. And we start working with that seed. It starts growing there. And if we allow it to form a root in our spirit, in our soul man, and it's the wrong root, it might take years to unplug and uproot and get that soil to a good place again. So my prayer is this morning that we will allow God to uproot what needs to be uprooted, to plant what needs to be planted, to water what needs to be watered, take care of our gardens. Then the body, of course, is the place that executes the action. Now many times, especially if you're in the prophetic, it takes years to hear the word, interpret it correctly, and then deliver it in a proper way. I think that's why we as Christians battle so many times, because we hear a word, and the interpretation goes through offense or unforgiveness or just our own filters. And then when it comes out, it's not a nice word. I attended a training many years ago where there was a person that was very traditional and um, a young man that had beautiful blonde shoulder length hair. I always liked the, the longer hair. Um, but this guy went to him and said, you know what, if you'll just cut your hair, God will be able to use you. It caused such damage in that child's life. But it's because of what goes on in our soul area that a word comes out that way. He felt condemned, so his word was one of condemnation. Now it's our job to uproot those bitter roots and that offense and that unforgiveness or whatever lies in our spirit, in our soul area. So we're going to talk about it a bit more tonight. But for this morning, I want to close with Leviticus 19 verse 19 that says, um, keep my statues and you shall not sow your field with mixed seed. So, my prayer for this season is that we will not implant mixed seeds in our soul area. That we will not allow that little bit of offense to stay there while we're preaching the truth. That we will not allow that bitter root to sit here at the back and think how we conduct ourselves is okay. That we will be willing and ready to allow the Lord to uproot what needs to be uprooted. So can we pray that this morning? If you say, Lord, I'm ready for you to do your work in my spirit this morning, I want you just to raise your hand, just as a sign in the spirit and say, Lord, we thank you this morning for your incorruptible seed. I thank you, Lord, that I can lay myself down this morning and just be ready for you to do what you want to do in this season. I thank you for showing each of us what mixed seed is there in our spirits. And even as that mixed seed means to be in a prison, we want to be free this morning. We want to move forward this morning. And I thank you, Lord, that in the spirit already we've, we're taking the first step this morning into our new season, into that place that you're calling us into, that place of intimacy 
that place of grace, that place of total acceptance of the Father, that place where you say, there's nothing I would change about you. And we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Anna-Marie doesn't know what to say yet, but she always has something to say. All right. All right, so I'll go. Um, why we're here is because we want to tell you what the Lord is saying, obviously. And we all have an expectation. Now, if you have an expectation, we all know what happens when you're expecting, especially the ladies that are pregnant or used to have children or had children or what's happening. You can't be pregnant unless you had intimacy, right? Yeah? And that's why we ask you today that you really trust the Lord, that you start to expect something. Because we believe this weekend the Lord wants to do something intimate with you. It's a new season. The Bible says to us, He doesn't want us to be like little children anymore. He wants us to mature. The body of Christ needs to mature. And what the enemy is trying to do is he keeps us into a place of immaturity. And immature, children cannot bring forth children, isn't it? So this weekend, that's the prayer of our hearts. So I just want you to close your eyes. Father, we thank you this morning for that seed that you are busy, the, the ground that you are busy preparing. You have prepared it already. But thank you this morning, Lord, if we look at the seed, and some of us are at a place where the seed are literally under the ground. And some of us might feel, I think I've died. I think I've died in this process. But I just want to say this morning, take courage, you're not dead. The Lord is just preparing, and there's something happening under the ground. There's an intimacy, there's a fertility taking place with the seed. 